Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Williams, and as always, I greet you with Jesus' joy. Well, we're kind of preoccupied with this theme of storms, and so I want to continue that theme of storms and see what the Spirit wants to continue to say. We've looked already at several uh, sets of devotionals about storms, one that had to do with storms in Paul's life when he was in a ship on his way to Rome as a prisoner. We looked at the life of the disciples who were with Jesus in a ship in the sea, in the storm on the Sea of Galilee, learn some lessons there. Now I want to go to the Old Testament record of Jonah, the book of Jonah, and see what the Spirit has to say about storms in the book of Jonah. And let me encourage you to read that book at your leisure. It's only four chapters long, and I'm not going to read everything I want to read to you today. I just want to read the first four verses. But let me encourage you to read it at your leisure. It reads like this, beginning with verse 1 through verse 4 of Jonah chapter 1. It says that the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come before up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed to Tarsus. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed from Tarsus to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. Oftentimes when people look at Jonah's story, they go straight to the storm. And we'll be talking about the storm, but today I just want to tell us that we ought to pay attention to the storm. And I want us to look, first of all, at what caused the storm. I mean, we like to jump in the story where he was in the storm, but why was Jonah in a storm in the first place? Well, Jonah was in a storm basically because he was disobeying God. That's the root of it all. Now, remember, if you were looking at other devotions, I told you that Warren Wiersbe says that life brings us basically two kinds of storms. One is a storm for perfection that comes as a consequence of obedience. That's what the disciples were in a storm in Galilee, the Sea of Galilee. They were in that storm, and the purpose of the storm was to perfect their faith. So some storms come not so we can reject faith, but so that we can rehearse our faith so that we can practice faith. It's not so we can lose faith, but so that we can use our faith. Our faith gets flabby if we don't use it, and storms have a way of giving us a chance to perfect our faith, to teach us to trust God even in a storm, or even especially in a storm. So there are some storms that are storms for perfection that come as a consequence of obedience. But then there are storms that are storms that are storms for correction that comes as a consequence of disobedience. That's what this storm is. It's a storm for correction. Jonah is God's man, and Jonah knows he's God's man. Jonah has been given a purpose by God, and Jonah knows what the purpose is. But he didn't like the purpose. He didn't like God's plan for his life. He didn't like the fact that God wanted him to go preach to the Ninevites because the Ninevites and the Israelites had a history with one another. And so he hated those Ninevites and he did not want to go preach because he knew how God was. So I don't want to go preach God because I know who you are. If I go preach to those people, you're going to let them off the hook. You will have mercy if they repent. And so he knew the compassion of God. That's why he didn't want to preach to his own enemies to give them a chance to know God too. So the Bible says he goes in the opposite direction. And when he goes in the opposite direction, watch this. God loves him so much that he sends a storm after him. <laughs> Sounds when you think about God sending a storm and that, that is kind of Old Testament language. They believe God was behind everything. The truth of the matter is some storms come because we live in a fallen world. And it is also true that there are some storms in our lives that come um, not because we've done anything wrong. There's no direct correlation between our behavior and storms. But then there are some storms that are directly related to our behavior. And sometimes we know it. There's some storms that come because we know we are outside of the will of God. There are times when storms come, God doesn't have to do anything because sin has within it the seeds of its own consequences. But look at God. God is so good <laughs> that he has a purpose for Jonah 
And so he won't let Jonah get out of his purpose. And so he sends a storm, not to hurt him, but to turn him around. And many of us know that there are certain things in our lives that are the consequence of our behavior. There are certain financial issues that come up and they're directly related to our spending behavior. There are certain health issues that come up. They are directly related to our lack of, of exercise and not eating right. There are certain relational consequences that we have. Some of our marriages are messed up, not because our spouse is crazy, but because we've done some things and we know that what we're doing has brought our relationship the way it is. There are some things in our businesses. We've done some unethical and immoral behavior. And we thought that because other people could get away with it, that we could get away with it too. But now we're in a storm. And it's interesting that maybe some people got away with what Jonah didn't get away with. But you know, I have a feeling that sometimes God won't let us get away with what other people can get away with because God knows we know him and he knows us. It's not like some person living in the world that doesn't know God, but we know him and we know sometimes our purpose and we become wayward. But God is so good that God sends a storm to grab us, to capture us, to blow us back on course. In fact, some of y'all are having flashbacks right now. You're thinking about the fact that you are where you are right now in the Lord and feeling the, the favor of God, but you know it was a storm that blew you back into the favor of God. Listen, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're going through now, but if you're in the midst of a storm, can I give you some advice? Listen to the storm. The storm just might be the love of God simply trying to blow you back into his will. God bless you. I'll see you next time.